Hey everyone, thanks for watching here on YouTube. If you like the CB vlog and all these episodes that we put out, uh, you can go down and hit subscribe. That helps us make even more. If you want to help in a more direct way, you can go to Patreon, patreon.com slash commandersbrew. Help us make the show, get in on the Discord, and some of the other perks we have uh, that we offer over there. Uh, but let's start talking about today's topic. You know, we've let the dust settle a little bit. So I want to talk about the commander pre-cons. Okay. Um, you know, we it's been uh, you know it's been long enough now. It's been a few weeks. You know, people have had their we've had you know tons and tons of previews. We've seen set reviews. We've now actually gotten a chance to have the cards in our hands and play a few games with them. I'm guessing, especially all of you folks who went to GP Vegas, obviously, like a, you know we saw a lot of action come out of there. And you know, people generally seem happier this year with the precons. Uh, last year, I think was a was like a bit of a miss uh, for for uh, especially the enfranchised commander players um uh, this year seemed to be a little better everyone seemed to be a little happier i know I me mean, personally i was happier sean you seemed happier yes so what i wanted to, i just wanted to talk about like what do we expect out of these things like why were we unhappy last year why are we happier this year why does it seem like in the past things were better in general what is what you know let's just let's break it down because we hear opinions all the time but I kind of wanted to get at the root of why these opinions sort of, you know, make it to the surface and why these opinions are, you know, the, that why, why we have them, basically. Yeah, I think you've done a great job here, Andy. Uh, this In this discussion, we, we are going to set out to kind of break down that sort of vague idea and try to, like, come up with, like, some just more specific things that people want or feel are lacking. So, I mean, it's always easier to break a problem down into smaller pieces. So just like, what like what do we want from a pre-con? Too vague, too vague. We gotta get, get more specific. And you've got a nice list of things to consider here. Yeah, it's because it's all about expectations, right? Our expectations yes. being met, are our expect are certain people's expectations or ours or whoever's too high or maybe even they're too low, we'll see, right? So this is what it's all about. It's all about expect expectations and, and therefore what we want you know, with those expectations. So I've broken it down to like four main things, right? Four main things that we expect slash want out of the commander precons. First, we want decent reprints, right? That's a big thing. Everyone's always talking about what reprints we're getting. Um, we, we specifically want ones that um, have like are, are becoming pricey or are pricey or whatever, right? We want them to, the franchise players definitely, especially more so want the those prices to come down. Uh, second, we have playable slash fun new cards the new cards that they make uh, uh you know within the decks those like 15 to 17 whatever it is new cards we, we we expect those and we and we want those to be fun and or playable they don't necessarily need to be amazingly high powered or anything they just you know they just kind of need to spark our imagination yes. uh yeah go ahead and you can read these next two uh, and then, so to piggyback off of that one, we also want playable and fun new commanders. I think you, the phrase spark our imagination is key there, right? Yeah. Uh, so we're looking for commanders that like fill a role that we've always been missing. Looking at you, werewolf commander. Uh, or like just have a, a nice commander in a nice color set, maybe a wedge that doesn't have a lot of commanders, that has a lot of direction. So you can be a lot of creative options with it. Yeah, and and again, just playable slash fun. Like that's that's kind of what we want. That's that's kind of all that that matters at, at its core. <clears throat> and and finally, and finally, it it really should be playable out of the box. It is easy for some of us in franchise players to just look at it as parts, right? Mm -hmm. To just yeah. look at it, but but it it is important that these are playable outside of the box because. That's how a ton of new players get into it. It is intimidating to brew up your first commander deck if you're new to the game. There's what there's tens of thousands of cards to choose from. You know, once you eliminate your color identity, that only drops to like what, like eight thousand, right? <laughs> if you only, but like still, this is a daunting task. So having something that's playable outside of the box, that's designed well, that can have a few surprising synergies that maybe aren't obvious right away but as a newer player you can be like oh this mm -hmm. works great with this that's so cool that is 
very important and should be mentioned. Yeah, and it's playable doesn't necessarily mean just literally playable. It obvi- obviously <laughs> yes, it yes. means like, you know, not not too complex. I uh, might mind you this is commander so complexity is a given, but you don't want it to be too intimidating or whatever and uh and you want it to just like you want it to work. You don't want it to be all eight mana spells and, you know, no way to get there. Uh, right. Obviously, we want to see a curve and things like that. So, that's what I mean when we say playable. Um and so in, in order to like understand all the different expectations and things like that, I created a little uh, like chart of who cares about what, right? So we have commanders, we have new cards, we have reprints, we have the playability out of the box, right? Uh, and it's different for the three main groups of people who are interested in this product, right? So new players, uh, to start off, we always recommend, and like we, and by we, I don't just mean this podcast, I mean, I think all like most content creators and most just commander players in general most established commander players always recommend the precons to newer players it's a great starting off point and everyone sort of knows that so so to to new players they they would rank in, i think and sean you feel free to disagree with me or or bring anything up that you think is necessary uh, i think they rank them like this in, in in terms of what they want and what's important to them playability is number one I think they want to see the the commanders second. Like that's important. That's like the next most important thing because that's right on the front of the box. Like that's got to inspire them. Then I think we have new cards. Oh, sorry. Uh, no. Then I think we have reprints and new cards. They're kind of in the same realm because they don't know them if they're new, anyways. So they won't be able to really tell the difference between a reprint and a new card. I uh, I think in general you're going to find new cards be more important, but reprints are also fun. It, it kind of doesn't matter because like if you don't have a context for any of it how would you even tell what's what anyways i like to rank it i like to rank it that uh the to a new player although they don't know the difference reprints are higher up on the list than new cards because although they don't know the difference when they go to brew their second deck they will want the reprints more than they will want the new cards most likely that's a good point so so yeah so new players playability commanders and then reprints and new cards that seems to be Generally speaking, what I was thinking as far, as far as a new player goes, what they would look at and what would you know entice them. Uh, mm. Us in franchise players, it's a little different. Uh, Sean, break this one down for us. Sure. So I think to us in franchise players, we mainly are concerned with reprints. That's the argument that comes up the most. We're always just begging for reprints. We do that all the time. We beg on this show all the time for like, give us more lightning greaves. Give us more of those staples that are just like ubiquitous. Uh, I think next up we want new commanders. Uh, yeah, man, we're always looking for new inspiration, new ways to play, new decks to exist, right? When new commanders come out, new decks are born. We love that. Uh, next, we're talking about new cards. Man, new cards are so fun, right? Like we seeing new cards and finding out new decks that they can go in, seeing new, maybe they open up new commanders. That's, uh, that's the next thing down the list. And I think for us in franchise players, playability is the last on the list because we probably have a few decks of our own. Uh, those are probably more fun. I know once you've brewed up a few decks, the decks you've brewed become your favorite decks because your heart's in them. And your heart is not in a new deck. Yeah, exactly. So, and, and, I mean, a precon. It's very like it's very unlikely that you're gonna just break the precon out of the box unless you're in like a league or something, right? Like to just yes. and just play it as is. So the the reprints, sorry, the new cards and commanders are kind of very very similar here some players are going to want some enfranchise players are going to be more interested in brewing new decks some enfranchise players are going to be more interested in beefing up their current decks with new cards so i I think that's pretty close it could switch depending on who you're talking to i think but in general reprints are high up playability is is not important to us then you take a look at what wizards of the coast wants and what they think is important and i think uh this is very important so for them just like new players playability is paramount right because they want people to to pick these up and just play them they want that to be able to happen because they want to attract new players and that's what's important to new players so that's what's important to them that makes sense and i think we all in like we all in general just know that and we accept that and i think that that's a good thing because we're getting more players to play commander that way uh but i think after that it's similar to older players where the new cards and new commanders become the most important for, for what Wizards is trying to push. They want people to be uh, enticed by the flashy new things that they've created, 
uh, commanders uh, and and again new cards. I, I put new cards ahead of commanders, but it, I think it's the pretty swappable in this case. Um, yeah, we've heard stories of people on these design teams. It was like eh, I've always wanted a card like this for a commander deck I have, so I got it made and I put it in one of these precons. So now I have it in this other deck that it wasn't even meant for. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and finally, I think reprints become less important to them because there's this thing where Wizards doesn't pay attention to the secondary market, and I think they just in general care less about what gets reprinted for Commander because it's an eternal format. There's so many cards there. I think, and I think recently they've kind of shown that they don't like they're not willing to put in expensive. And I'm not talking about like hundred dollar cards here. I'm talking about like ten dollar cards in the Commander sets anymore because of whatever reason right so so i think that that's pretty fair i think wizards and new players care more about the uh the playability uh and old players care about the reprints and and then we kind of rank the others as as we go so so what's the way so like what's the way to manage these expectations and like please more people and this is just a general discussion i kind of wanted to have between us like i i think that one big question I have is like wizards say they don't pay attention to the secondary market, right? So, uh, but I think that that's like um, they ha- maybe they have to say that for like legal reasons or something because I think they do. Yeah, because it's hundred percent like demonstrably false. Like it's hundred percent not true. <laughs> because otherwise, if that were true, like we would get commander uh, uh, decks reprinted with like to the T, right? We'd see. Very, we'd see expensive cards being reprinted if if they truly didn't care. Now it's a good thing that they that they do it uh, more so the way they do it now, right? We don't, I don't want them to print a two hundred dollar card in in a commander deck because then the decks themselves will be crazy priced. So this is this like dance that we have to that we and they have to do where they have to create enough value for it to make sense for the old players, but also be cool for the new players. I think in general they've they've always hit a pretty good balance. But it seems lately that they're really slacking on the reprints. And I'm not going to, uh, I'm certainly not as upset as I was last year. Like that Jun deck still makes me mad thinking about it yeah. and all the misses that they could have had. And we're not even talking about simply, we're not even talking about expensive cards here. We're talking about four, five, six dollar cards that they could have thrown in that would have brought the price of those cards down and made the deck so much better. Playability. Playability, right? That's a different type of playability that I think they're missing. They're, yeah, like, you know what I mean, and so I mean, right, right. I think this might make sense as a strategy. Why? I mean, we've suggested many, many things, right? I think <coughs> a little pack pack of commander staples or like packs of commander cards, where some are rare, some are like like random packs, not meant to be drafted, just full of commander staples. That would be a product we would buy a lot of, I think. But I think another thing they could do is just be. You're talking about expectations, right? People feel way better when you manage expectations. It's the classic example. It's scarier to not know what's going to happen than it is to get some bad news, right? Getting bad news feels less bad than just wondering forever, like, what's happening? What's going on? That's why, like, you know, when companies just like, people, you hear this all the time, I just want them to tell me why we're waiting so long. I'm at this yeah. airport. Just tell me why we're waiting. I'll feel fine. Just don't make me wait. Same idea here. We always <coughs> wonder about reprints, and then we don't get them, and we feel mad. Just be straight up with us. As soon, like, as soon as you can, wizards, you should say, like, okay, we're a month away from spoilers, but here's what we do know. Every deck's getting a solemn simulacrum. Two of the four are getting a lightning graves. This is what's in here. This is what's in here. We've got one or two splashier reprints we're going to save for spoiler season. But, like, here's some of the staples you can count on. We're going to guarantee it from this point forward. I know they have the decks, like, a year in advance, don't yeah. they? Something like that? Yeah. I My thing, I guess, is, is and, uh, you know, maybe, we, maybe we'll get someone like Gavin on the show again and talk about it again. And because they also want to inspire creativity, right? They don't want to just put every card in and and that you would include in a in any given deck like and just make it so that you don't have to go get anything. And I like that. That's good. You want you want room to to brew. You want a little room to to maneuver. Um uh, and there's and there's some reprints that are like, "Well, why wasn't this reprinted? It just need we just need it, right? We just need it as to 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 make the game more playable." So I would argue that they that that's something that they should look at. They should look at making it so that these staple cards just stay down in price. And 
by reprinting one solemn simulacrum with alternate art like you're not doing that nope. <laughs> you know like you're not doing it or lightning greaves like again two or more decks would, would be helpful so like what i was thinking is like they're not gonna ever uh you know come out and say that they care about the secondary market even though they obviously do but isn't there some value in um like looking and again this is like an internal thing like i don't know how this really applies to us as players but like seeing like what type of price drops you you get from when you reprint a card right especially a card that's like maybe only been printed once like geth was an excellent reprint i think like that card's expensive and i think only because it's you know it's only printed once and uh, it's a pretty good commander card so pr reprinting that again that price is going to drop down and it happens you've seen it in the past like you could give your you have your own data kind of of where this goes so like you can kind of anticipate you know where these reprints are going to go the other side i wanted to just mention before we're sort of done with this is that they're afraid of the decks being too expensive right and people just like you know buying it for 40 bucks or whatever it is by the way they've raised the price twice now which you know i think that should mean that you get more stuff out of it and it hasn't um you uh uh you know the the decks come out with a certain price and they have a certain amount of value cards in them but then it always goes up like it's tough now to go back and find you know even ones from last year or the year before that are that are not raised in price past the msrp so but that's where that's where it like that's where you have the 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 it's it's malleable right like we attach those values to the new cards because there is no value for it and it's just about supply and demand. So making it a high supply means that the, the card cost goes down. It's like, it feels like, do they have people thinking about that? I don't think they do. Maybe they do. I don't know. But anyways, I, I think that like there's some, there's some balance that needs to be hit with like newer cards and reprints that I I feel like they, they, they had earlier in, in the sets, like 2017. The four-color decks, I think, were the best. That's the peak. Yeah. There was um, amazing reprints in there. I was still I still bought those decks at or at least very close to the MSRP. You know what I mean? Like, it's not impossible if you do that to make those, you know, those, those decks be that cheap. One thing that helped was putting them in, like, Walmart and stuff like that. And I know that you know, it's not great to go buy cards from there, but that's what kept the LGSs in line of like, fine, well, you know, we can't overcharge people too much for this. I wonder if, I mean, this is a whole other thing. Like, wouldn't this problem be solved if Wizards could be like a direct seller? Like if they had like a distribution system, so you could just be like, hey, I, so if everybody only wants, let's say, the Populate deck from the new C19, if everyone wants that one and it's disproportionate, we all order directly from the website. It's always MSRP. No one wins or loses anything on that. And they just be like, hey, man, fire up the printers, make a couple extra of those Naya ones because the orders are in. Uh, and you'll always be able to meet the demand. And then you just have a cutoff date that's like, after this day, we will no longer be like, buy to order ones. Or like something like buying them from Amazon. I know I've looked several times on Amazon being like, I wonder if I can just order the Commander decks through Amazon. It's like, no, you can't. It's always some reseller who's, you know, selling them for way more money. But yeah, like that seems to me like it like even putting that on a timed thing, it's like we'll print enough to make it work, but but up until like a month after, like you can't then you can't do it anymore. And then it's only at LGS. It's like, is that like why is that not a, not even an option? It feels like it would really help the, the players the most obviously um and and if you're not in it to help the players like i don't get what like what are we doing like ultimately you want lgs's to to thrive because of the players right we can't be yeah. sacrificing the players for the for the stores like i know obviously the stores are super important and you want to support especially your lgs's not just like target and walmart and stuff yeah don't buy stuff at target and walmart if possible right but like but at the same time like those stores do serve a purpose of msrp being a thing that is you know enforced kind yeah of, right like that that's yeah. that's the thing like i don't i don't hate the idea of doing that but then if but then here's the thing if if target and walmart sells it for 40 bucks bang on all the decks they don't care what's in it 
then the LGSs have to be like, okay, well, we can't charge to hundred dollars for these decks because people. But they do to... though, because I know. because because people can only go to Walmart and only the guy who like knows the guy who puts the stuff on the shelves gets those decks at forty bucks, right? Which uh, is why Amazon slash direct selling it is a be- even better idea. Yeah, direct selling it, right? Sell it directly, us print to order. As this, no one has to play any games. That's the and, thing. And, you know, yes, exactly. Give a special discount to LGSs and say, hey, if you're a proven LGS that has a wizard license, I don't know how it works, but if you're like a licensed LGS that you can do FNMs, that means wizards trust you. You you handle their product yeah. well. They can give you like a discount rate so that you don't end up losing money by ordering them through this and selling them to the people so that everybody wins. Everybody has unlimited access at true MSRP uh, until the time limits up. And then we can all be like, great, I bought an extra 10 because the sick cards in there. It's like, fine. It didn't cause that you can sit on them for three years and then make a mint if you want. And the LGS is the same deal. Yeah. Like if you people are like, we only want this populate one. Cool. We're only buying this populate one from wizards. We're getting them shipped in for that first month. I think I solved it. I, I think you did, honestly, because that's still that also solves the problem of like, well, now we're all buying our stuff on Amazon. It's like, well, like it still leaves room for the people who want to just go and support their LGS, which we all know is better for all of us if yes. we do that. So if they're selling it for the same price, then it's like, well, I would choose to buy it from my, my LGS if that were the case. Yeah, like, I, I honestly shipping. would because, <laughs> yeah, there's also that. <laughs> I mean, most people aren't paying shipping for Amazon. They have Amazon Prime. Uh, yeah, but how you know, do they get But you yeah, know okay. what I mean? But that, but that's I still think that there's that like thing of like you're at your game store. It's like, oh, man, the Commander product's out. I'll grab one or I'll grab them all from there like you can pre-order from your and LGS some boxes too. and some sleeves exactly. and like, like hey man i want that greven playmat because it looks so rad yeah i don't know if there's a greven playmat there should be it looks amazing be. i hope there i hope there will be <laughs> uh anyway so i think we did solve everything and and from here going out i think it, everything's gonna be perfect <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, just wanted to spark the discussion. Obviously, we haven't solved anything, but like, it's just it, it's important to talk about those things. And I, man, I really hope that there's a way to around this. I I feel like there's not. I feel like we're never going to get any kind of change to this system, um, just because it's the way it is. But uh, I, like, I do. I think Commander is an opportunity specifically to branch out and change the way you do things. Like, this isn't an event deck. This isn't a modern event deck, right? Like, this is yep. Commander. This is your most played casual format. This is yeah. our, possibly the most played format, period. Like, they don't really know because it's played so casually. Yeah. Uh, so I think there's an opportunity to help out those players and even get more players. I love it. And, make and, they, and like, Wizards makes a ton of money still off of it. Ah. Anyways. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, uh, we were right about Commander Zone at GP Vegas. Don't forget about that. We're right about this, too. I'm saying it. Uh, thanks, everyone, for uh, for watching this one. Um, uh, CB Vlog. uh you know, we love making these for you. Uh, if you if you like it, again, hit subscribe. It helps us uh, continue to make them. Uh, we'll see everyone next time. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you love what we're doing, consider supporting the show by going to patreon.com slash commandersbrew. And if you want to get any of the cards from our deck list, go to our TCG player affiliate link below. That helps us out too. And for a free way to help us out, consider sharing the show with some friends. Like and subscribe, add a comment or two. See you later. Bye.